This is my Captain Opportunity jacket. Who recognizes this from the Matrix? I'm going to be talking about the red pill and the blue pill in a minute. But in the movie, the hero of the movie, Neo, is given a choice. The blue pill, which, you give is, which, which re represents falsehood, living in a false sense of security, and total enslavement by the, the uh, computer state. And the blue, the, uh, that's the blue pill. The red pill is freedom, knowledge, and complete opportunity. And that's the difference between the blue pill and the red pill. You could probably guess where I'm going with this. I'm going to finish up in a minute on that. So my name is John Paul, and I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I run uh, Grand Opportunity USA, and we have four of our, three of our other directors here in the audience um, with us today. And um, I'm a conservative author. Thank you, Bill, for the introduction about my book, Cues for Conservatives. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I have a lot of experience marketing to millennials, and as we all know, wouldn't it be great to have a lot more millennials here in the audience today? We're going to change that. We have to work on that. We got a couple back there. <laughs> um, and uh, this is the organization logo, Grand Opportunity USA, and I'll be talking about that. Do you guys like the logo, by the way? The star? OK. Um, this is the book that Bill had mentioned, Cues for Conservatives. It's, I, I thought a couple years ago we needed a, a better answer to ru the Rules for Radicals book by the, I can't say it, heinous um, uh, Saul Alinsky. And I also focused on how we can better um, market our message to millennials and minorities and people that are not really being attended to well with, with the conservative movement. And that formed the basis of our organization. Okay, you didn't eat your lunch yet, but if you did, you might lose it. Um, this is the map of America if only millennials voted. Uh, my, between Wyoming and Nebraska, Trump would have won six electoral votes and Clinton would have run 532. And they're up to age 38, so it's not the whole, oh, they're in college thing, and they don't know yet. They're up 18 to 38 is their age, so we have a little bit of a problem on our hands. If only people of color voted, it's even worse. Landslide. Not one electoral vote for, for, for Trump. Millennials will be 40% of the vote by 2020. They'll be 75% of the workforce by 2025 and running the table on everything in our country. And right now... 64% want to see Trump forcibly removed from office. Um, racial minorities are 30% 6% of the vote today, and they'll be in the majority by 2043. So if you add that both together, we're uh, facing becoming a permanent minority party unless we do something about it. Um, referencing the blue pill and the red pill, the blue pill is the Democrat pill. That's the pill of falsehood, blissful ignorance of the world, total enslavement of the state, um, false security, no freedoms. The red pill right now young people think is bitter because it means the harsh truth of reality um, but independence opportunity knowledge and total freedom so you have to be crazy not to want the red pill but the red pill they're taking the blue pill right now so that's the the, the motif there 58 percent of millennials did you hear about this survey support communism and socialism only 44 percent support capitalism um, there's a whole lot of reasons for that the media the educational system right they've been working very very hard to get them to, to, to take the bad medicine of the blue pill. And uh, what the heck, they only killed 100 million people. Actually, it's probably more than 100 million people. That's a conservative estimate last century. And these idiots, I'm not idiots, but idiots in the movement, they, wanna, they want more of it, right? That's a problem. So we have to figure out how to solve this problem. Um, these, are the, these are the distributors of the drug, the blue drug. Um, I think the Socialist Party is going over pretty well. I think that should be the new logo. What do you guys think of the Democrat Party logo? I'm going to offer this to them on me, no, no charge. Uh, but it's doing really well. They, they're, they're getting everybody hook, hook, line, and sinker into thinking this is a great thing. Um, so the forces fighting us are many. We have all of these crazy leftist communist networks spreading fake news all day long. Um, you've probably heard of this. This study maybe not up to 98% negative on Trump in the media. Uh, you'll, you'll see the red versus the green there. Um, it's just absolutely crazy. It's never happened before in the history of our country. Um, up, the, up the road here in California, you have UC Berkeley protests. If you speak your mind, you're going to get burned down, right? If you're conservative on campus. Um, that's my favorite picture of, of, of Hillary. Standard Hillary. That was probably her right after that first debate. I don't know. Um, Resist, enlist, persist, you know, all this nonsense onward together to go back to communism? I don't know. Um, George Soros is spending $80 million on his anti-Trump network. They have 32, they're in 32 states. 
like a cancer. I wish he had, man, well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> like a cancer. You have uh, David Brock with that funny hair. He's got, he raised $100 million to destroy Trump. That's his whole motif, destroy Trump. Um, and now we have this unfortunate string of, of GOP losses. Everybody hear about the GOP losses, right, nonstop in the news? Um, and we have people fighting within the party. The Democrats are good getting together and, and getting on the same page, but we're not. So we have to do something about it. Uh, we need a solution now. Do you all agree we need to do something kind of shocking about this? <laughs> so I agree. So I think I may have mentioned I, I run a marketing agency in Boston. So my job as a, as a branding guy, I started getting down to Washington because the CIA hired me to produce their recruiting videos a few years ago. And then I started opening my eyes to politics saying, well, I'm in communist Massachusetts. What can I do about it? But I thought, what the heck? You know, no one else is doing it. So the thought, how can we change the, change the subject, change the story? Well, I think it starts with messaging and branding. A lot more goes into it, but we're doing terrible at messaging and branding. I guess you guys pretty much agree with that, right? We're not getting people outside our room interested in our movement. So words matter. Democrats understand that. Republicans, in principle, do not. Democrats understand that visual emotional storytelling is the most important, effective means of engaging their audience. People don't listen to facts and figures. People, are, you can remember a story up to 80% of the time or more, but facts and figures, you'll hear it, and a day later, maybe 10% recall. So facts and figures are on our side, but we're not good at storytelling. Democrats have appropriated these words. We used to be the liberals, you know, right? We were the liberals, now they're liberal. They call themselves progressive, pro-choice, you know, social justice. Even sanctuary cities gives me the creeps, because sanctuary, it sounds like you're helping somebody with sanctuary, right? We're falling into their trap. We shouldn't be using those damn words. We're, we're, we're advertising for them when we use these words ourselves. We should be using words like this. I call them seditious cities. You'll never hear me say, say sanctuary cities. I call them regressives because we're complimenting them the whole day long when we're, t we're giving these words. So we know what their words mean, but they're good at using words and language. We're terrible at it. Except once we switched the estate tax to the death tax. Estate tax had 80% of people in the country approving it. For once, Republicans were smart. They called it the death tax. It turned to 80% of people against it. Okay? That's one word. 80%, 20%. Okay? It means a lot. Words matter. You guys like that? It's true. Then Republicans were smart one time when it came to words. So what do we have? We have conservative. The view of uh, the mainstream media is old white guys, right? That's not true, but that's what they call us, and that's what your average college kid thinks. That's why they'd never support us. Branding matters. You guys ever use, ever hear of Old Spice? Of course, everybody hears Old Spice. Do you remember it was that white bottle on the shelf that your grandfather would use, and you would, it was a joke? Okay, Old Spice. Well, Old Spice is the number one rebranding thing in history. As a, brander guy, a branding guy, it's the number one rebranding success in history. They went from your grandfather's cologne to the coolest number one selling body wash and deodorant, young men's body wash and deodorant in the planet. In eight years, 2010, they changed their advertising to fun, funny, uh, funny commercials with guys and horses and all kinds of things, making it funny and fresh. And they're, they're the number one selling brand, right? We have to do what Old Spice did. We have a problem with old in our name too, by the way, Grand Old Party. So it's time to go out with the old and the GOP and in with the new opportunity. Interestingly, opportunity means a good chance at progression and success. So we're actually the real progressives because that's what opportunity means in a better way. So I like, do you guys like the word opportunity? Look in your table. Everybody take a coaster. There's coasters on your tables at the Grand Opportunity Party. You're going to see that in a minute. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So the tip of the spear to me is the word opportunity because that is an underused word. It's used a lot but not used properly. We need to make that our word. Like the left has progressive and Democrat, I mean de progressive and liberal. I like the word opportunity because we can talk about it all day long. Because you know what? We beat the hell out of progressives on the word opportunity. Where can they beat us on opportunity? Economical, we're going to tax you more and put you out of business. Right? Religious liberties? Any liberties? No. No, no to liberty on the left. So the idea was take the logo from the GOP, add the Air Force star, the cool Air Force star from the 50s and up to I think the 50s they used, and create something brand new that maybe millennials will like. The new GOP logo, the Grand Opportunity Party. What do you think? We were at CPAC, we saw hundreds of people, we interviewed like crazy a few weeks ago, and guess how many people were against this idea? 
Not one. Not one person said, oh, it's the name of the party. We have to keep it. Not one person said that. Um, positive messages prevail in politics. In the last 90 years, the um, more positive candidate won. So the left is all about doom and gloom. This is our chance to be positive, because often we are about doom and gloom. So we're the positive party of, America, of, of opportunity in America, and I think that's where we can focus our energies. And like Nike has a swish, we have the star, or the opportunity star. Very American, it's on the flag, it's on the Air Force planes. And to give some meat on the bones here, we break it down to economic opportunity, personal opportunity like liberties and freedoms, educational opportunity because millennials, that's their number one concern. Millennials and minorities, it's either number one or number two on their list of concerns. Social opportunity and national opportunity. Things like terrorism and borders. So we, we think we nicely wrap up all of the things we concern about as conservatives in the language of opportunity using this five star approach. So that's the idea of the star. It's not just a cool looking logo. <laughs> Um, an opportunity for all, even if you're a communist, oh, not communist, okay. Even if you're a Democrat and you're, you hate us, we're going to shove opportunity down your throat so much, you're going to hate having more money and a better job, I guess, right? So that's what we're going to do. The terrible thing we're going to do to the liberals is we're going to give them more opportunity. They're the anti-opportunity party, so we have to hit them in their, we have to hit them where it counts. That we're traditionally, the, we've been the anti-party, right? We're anti-choice and we're anti-this and we're anti-that. We have to turn the tables on the left. Opportunity is our thing. They're anti-opportunity, anti-jobs, anti-education, anti-freedom, anti-religion, anti-life, anti-borders. They're anti-everything. They should just be called the anti-party, for God's sakes, right? So we have to be a better job knocking them down and not using their language to knock ourselves down, like progressive, liberal, and all that other jazz. And things like, so we can take it down to policies, things like economic opportunity. You know, we have to defeat more taxes and roll back regulations, right? Opportunity, that's, you can't have opportunity when they're killing you with taxes and regulations. Um, promote educational opportunity through three, for, um, school choice and campus free speech. Charlie Kirk will be here later talking about what's happening on campuses. Free speech on campuses, how can you have an education if you can't speak, right? Um, national opportunity, protecting our borders. Uh, social opportunity, protecting minority women's and gay rights. I think we have to lead that charge because we're the ones for getting out of your bedroom and out of your pocket but not giving them special rights. And this is not identity politics. It's opportunity for everybody and showing how conservative values work for them. Religious and constitutional freedoms have got to be protected. And then we have to win back our schools, our universities, and the media. And that's what Captain Opportunity here is going to try to help do if we can. This is a Captain Opportunity Jack, by the way, not Captain America. Um, so our goal at Go USA, which is a short for Grand Opportunity, is to be the digital multi-platform entity that will act as the nucleus mes of messaging for the conservative movement. So we want to be able to help campaigns, organizations, everybody that's on our side that believes in what we believe in, which is any real conservative, right? With messaging and branding to help them, like an ad agency for the, for the whole movement, to help people you know, win elections, ideally, get younger people into politics, because if they don't start getting into politics, we're going to have progressives running everything, because people, we have to get them to run. So there's a lot that we believe we can do at, at Grand Opportunity um, USA. With partners like this, some of the people are here today, Represented on the screen. I'd love to work with all of these groups and more with the message of opportunity. The RNC in Washington, and we sat down with their political, um, millenni the pe people running their millennial engagement and um, minority engagement, and they're all on, they love the idea. So we're getting close to getting it there. Um, things you can do um, as conservatives, if you're interested, is partner with us and help us, let us help you with your messaging and branding, and we'll do it because it's not being done well enough, I think in general as conservatives. If you're a candidate, let's, let's win these elections. Let's go, I want to get in and go against the hardest to beat Democrats and show we can do it. Because with this messaging, I think we can do it. You know, we have to fight. We have to be, a, we have to be on the offense, not no longer on the defense here. Um, invite us to speak at your events. We're at CPAC. I've got about a dozen colleges that want to hear this message. Um, because they want to hear it. They like the idea of opportunity. We have a woman that was a, worked in the Hillary campaign. You'll see her in a second in a video, liking our message. Um, join our mailing list. We can use a few more likes. We just launched our, our video channel a few days ago. We have four likes. We need, <laughs> we need more than that, guys. We just launched it literally two days ago, so that's why. Um, but we, need, you know, we, have, we could use, fo we, we'd like followers and more, more people following us, engaging with us. Volunteering your time, we're looking for more social media experts to join and help us grow our message. Um, we're planning a fundraising dinner in a couple months, ideally, and uh, ideally probably around um, Irvine or Newport Beach. So we're going to talk about that, but we'll let you know about that. 
And um, we'd love you to consider donating to our cause because unfortunately we can't do it on an empty tank. So we could use money. So um, we're looking to raise funds as well. Um, and with that, I want to get you, before you have your lunch, I'm going to give you another bad look at the maps. Remember, remember these maps, millennials and non-white Americans, we have to change their minds because opportunity is what's going to do it. I can tell you a couple quick stories. We had a guy infiltrate a meeting of ours in Boston, a Republican meetup that Jeff here was running. Um, Jeff's out from Boston for, for grand opportunity. We had a guy from Antifa sit down wanting to he was just arrested a month earlier at a free speech rally in Boston, and he was all about catching us, us evil conservatives. Um, and uh, we got him to interview. He, he was undercover and finally set him up from Antifa. We interviewed him. He sounded like he was one of us. And he said, I agree with about 80% of what you guys are doing, and I think I'd change sides if you guys were running the party. That's an Antifa guy. We've had Hillary voters. The woman you see in the video was on Hillary's campaign, and she's running an organization called The Flip Side, trying to get both sides in the news. And she said privately after, she said, I love what you're doing. You have to change the name of the party, and I just love it. And she was just all about it. So, so many people on the left like this message. It just seems to be a winning strategy. So that's our goal. That's what we want to do. And uh, I like, um, we've got to get them to take the red pill, right? It looks like NyQuil to me, but we're not going to say that right now. That, we got to get them to take the red pill because that's going to save their life and save our country. We got to get them off the blue pill. <laughs>